Okay, so this is part two of the do-it-yourself kangaroo courts video. Uh, kangaroo court is a term descriptive of a sham legal proceeding in which a person's rights are totally disregarded, in which the result is a foregone conclusion because of the bias of the court or other tribunal. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about today about we've already done a little bit of foundational stuff in part one. Um, and so now we're going to talk about how to tell it's a kangaroo court, what they do in a kangaroo court, what's been done by others to defeat their kangaroo court without going in, and uh, some things to do if they drag you in there. Quite frankly, I wouldn't go in there. Um, I'd be serving them with paperwork, and um, and um, and at the end of the day, I'd uh, if they go and uh, hell hold their kangaroo court anyways, then I just file a revocation of signatures, and then a notice of void judgment. And um, anyway, so let's uh, and then I've got a traffic stop video uh, coming up that uh, that tells you how to deal with that in a traffic stop if necessary. Um, first of all. Um, a kangaroo court is the Vatican, okay? All courts are the Vatican, actually. Uh, if it's a judge, it's a kangaroo court. A lawful court is only a trial by jury of 12 of your peers, okay? Not a trial with a jury, okay? If it's U.S. citizens, then it's not your peers, okay? They're all slaves. And... Um, so, and a trial by jury, the jury calls the witnesses, the jury questions the witnesses, the jury determines the law and the facts in the matter, and the jury even pronounces sentence if necessary. And so, that's a trial by jury. A trial with jury is an admiralty proceeding or a proceeding in equity where the jury is this there for a show, and they can ignore the jury if they want. And in fact, uh, there's cases of federal courts that the jurors don't follow their instructions that the clerk on the, the, the on the bench gives them, then they put the juries in jail. And so, yeah, that's a real good jury, isn't it? There's lots of cases about that. So you need to be aware of this. These people are Satanists. Uh, anyways, if it is involving a statute, and it always is, then it's a kangaroo court. If the officers of the court are U.S. citizens, and they always are, then it's a kangaroo court. Um, don't get me going. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is Chisholm versus Georgia, like 1793 or 1798, something like that. Uh, and because it brings into action and enforces this great and glorious principle that the people are the sovereign of this country and consequently that fellow citizens and joint sovereigns cannot be degraded by appearing with each other in their own courts to have their controversies determined. Okay, so we have, we the people have no business going into these kangaroo courts. Okay, that's really what it comes down to. If we go in there, the judge should be representing us. And he should be saying, uh, and and we should, he should just say, uh, um, he should be talking to the prosecutor, and and um, uh, he shouldn't he should we shouldn't have to say anything. Okay, I've heard of cases like that where the guy goes in there and the judge they know who you are, and 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 you don't have to say anything, Mister whatever, and the judge talks to the prosecutor and the case goes away, and that's the end of it. Okay, and that's the way it should work. And if the if the judge is honoring his oath, and if he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, then that's exactly what the way it should work. And uh, uh, but but nowadays that is rare. Okay, but it does happen. Okay, uh, and so don't get me wrong; it does happen. You do have judges that honor the rules, and uh, and the problem goes away. Uh, anyways, state citizens are the only ones living under free government whose rights are incapable of impairment by legislation or judicial decision. Uh, state citizenship is a vested substantial property right, and the state has no power to divest or impair these rights. The state cannot diminish the rights of the people. Um, a kangaroo court. Uh, has a clerk masquerading as a judge. The clerks conspire with the prosecutor. Officers of the so-called court are U.S. citizens. The code enforcers are U.S. citizens. The compensation is royalty-related. They get a percentage of their theft. Uh, all officers collect royalties. All code enforcers collect royalties. They do. They get a commission. That's why they're out there doing that. 
Um, when acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, uh, the judge of a municipal court is acting as an administrating officer and not in a judicial capacity. Courts administrating or enforcing statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially, but merely act as an extension as an agent for the involved agency, but only in a ministerial capacity and not in a discretionary capacity. Well, how do you read bought and paid for? That's what's going on here, people. This guy is bought and paid for. And, uh, and so he's not a judge. He's a clerk. He's masquerading as a judge. It's a show trial. It's a kangaroo court. It is the accepted rule, not only in state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they are described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a ministerial clerk for an agency, okay? He's bought and paid for. He's not in his official capacity. He's in his private capacity. He's bought and paid for. Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, and I don't care what statute it is, any statute, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. He's bought and paid for. He's a clerk. A clerk masquerading as a judge is not competent to do anything judicial like issue orders or warrants. A clerk masquerading as a judge is operating in his private capacity and has no immunity. Uh, ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities, okay? It doesn't exist. It's a fraud. It's a nullity. That's why it's a void judgment, okay? And and watch my void judgments video. It's a fraud. These people are thieves. That's It's a gang of thieves is what they are. Oaths. This is Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume two. <clears throat> Excuse me. All oaths must be lawful, allowed by common law or some statute if they're administered by persons in their private capacity or not duly authorized, or a quorum non judice and void, okay? And the point is, is that I don't care if it's a judge, I don't care if it's a cop, I don't care who it is, they can be operating in their official capacity, or they can be operating in their private capacity. If they go outside the, the, the Constitution, if they're not honoring their oath, then they're operating in their private capacity. The government does not uh, protect them. Okay, they have no immunity, they're in their private capacity, and they're personally liable. Okay, and it all happens to all of them. And um, so they assault you with their criminal corporation, their Satanists. Okay, uh, this is Rundle versus Delaware, U.S. Supreme Court, 1852. My opinion is, and long has been, that the mayor and aldermen of a city corporation or the president and directors of a bank or the president and directors of a railroad company or other similar corporations are true parties that sue and are sued as trustees and representatives of the constantly changing stockholders. A corporation, therefore, being not a natural person, but a mere creature of the mind, invisible and intangible, cannot be a citizen of a state or of the United States, and cannot fall within the terms or power of the above-mentioned article, and can therefore neither plead nor be impleaded in the courts of the United States. Okay, so they assault you with their corporation. That's a fraud, okay? That's, that's a lie. They cannot do that, okay? It's all a fraud. Once a fraud, always a fraud. Things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by a subsequent act. A thing void in the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. Time cannot render valid an act void in its origin. Okay, these are all maxims of law. This is as old as time itself. Uh, out of fraud, no action arises, and any act by any government official to conceal a fraud becomes an act of fraud. It is a fraud to conceal a fraud. Uh, uh, and fraud is inexcusable and unpardonable. Fraud and deceit should excuse no man. Okay, and that's a cite from Coke, uh, and it's also cited in Bouvier's Law Dictionary. Uh, and, and any fraud amounts to injustice. Fraud and justice never dwell together. Um, 
what is otherwise good and just is sought by force and fraud becomes bad and unjust. That's why it's a commercial transaction. That's what you have to understand. And so you reject their offer of contract. And I've covered that in my Azel Pigs video. Uh, you reject their offer of contract. It's a commercial transaction. They're nothing but a bunch of Satanists. They're getting you into their so-called contract. Citation. A summons to appear applied particularly to process and spiritual court. The ecclesiastical courts proceed according to the courts of the civil and canon laws by citation and libel. Okay, and so this is taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. When you're dealing with these code enforcers, it's always by citation, okay? This is this is admiralty. This is uh, uh, um, ecclesiastical court. It's the Vatican. Okay, that's really what it is. It's exactly what it is. Ecclesiastical court. It's admiralty. Citation. This is, again, Tomlin's Law Dictionary. A summons to appear applied particularly to process and spiritual court. The ecclesiastical courts proceed according to the course of the civil and canon laws. Okay, so civil law, that's all that's interchangeable. That was covered in my previous video in part one. Okay, it's civil um, and Roman civil law. It's Roman law is what it is. Uh, Anyways, Black's Law Dictionary, second edition, citation. This is also the name of the process used in the English Ecclesiastical Probate and Divorce Court, okay? And that's a cite from Blackstone's Commentaries uh, and, and Black's Law Dictionary. Uh, all admiralty courts are ecclesiastical. Whenever you get stopped by these Leos, they issue a citation. All proceedings in the Texas District Courts are by citation. I file lawsuits in the Texas District Courts. That's the Superior Court of General Jurisdiction in Texas. And... Uh, and it's, it's by citation. You have to go and get them. You get a citation served. Uh, ecclesiastical courts is canon law is the Vatican. Martial law is the Vatican. Equity is the Vatican. Divorce is the Vatican. Uh, uh, first, they orchestrate a bankruptcy to bring about martial law, the emergency rule. Martial law destroys common law, which is the law of the land. And, and there's a lot of different definitions for common law. Common law is really just decisions of the courts, okay? And so it depends on what court. There's a common law of admiralty courts. And so the thing is, is that's why it's you need to specify law of the land, okay? And martial law creates the matrix, the illusion. Everything's an illusion. And so... Uh, that's the important thing to understand. Uh, there's two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by the sword and the other is by debt. And uh, that's John Adams, 1826. So they create the, the bankruptcy and it brings in the martial law and that brings in the matrix and they get rid of common law or the law of the land by doing that. Then they create the United Nations so they can shove their satanic unidroid contracts down your throat. This is not something that they've, they've been planning and orchestrating this things from the beginning, okay? It's been going on for hundreds of years, and maybe even, you know, more than that. But at least we know for hundreds of years, from the beginning, from the minute the Constitution was written, they were doing everything they could to destroy it. Uh, color of office, a pretense of official right to do an act made by one who has such no such right. Such person must be at least a de facto officer, an act wrongfully done by an officer under the pretended authority of his office is grounded on corruption, okay, to which the office is a mere shadow and color. Okay, so the point is, is that if he goes out the, outside the scope of the of the office, then, then it's pretended, okay, because again, he's an imposter, okay, it's like the peace officer that's where the police officer that's wearing the uniform, okay? The uniform as a uniform of a peace officer, but when he's enforcing enforcing the codes, then then uh, he's not operating in his official capacity, he's operating as private capacity, so he's operating under color of office, his pretended authority of his office. He's not under his, and once you understand that, you start pointing it out, all of a sudden, he doesn't want to talk to you anymore, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Bouvier's Law Dictionary will cover that in my traffic stop uh, uh, video coming up. Uh, this is Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1897 edition. Jesuits and etc. born in the king's dominion and ordained by the pretended jurisdiction of Rome, okay? That's all the Vatican, okay? This is ecclesiastical, okay? Uh, Jacob A. New Law Dictionary, 1750 edition. And, and this is another site of the Jacob A. New Law Dictionary. And the pretended act of parliament for turning books of law and proceedings of courts into justice, of uh, justice into English was declared to be enforced. So the point is, is that they do all sorts of these so-called pretended acts, okay? Matter of fact, 
It's, it's in the Declaration of Independence. Uh, they lie and wait for you to say the wrong thing so they can justify selling you into slavery. And this is Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Give color to admit, either expressly or implied by silence, that an opponent's allegations appear to be meritorious, okay, up here, okay, so it's it's all color of law, color is the appearance of something, in common law pleading, a defendant's plea of confession and avoidance, okay, had to give color to the plaintiff's allegations in the complaint, or the plea would be fatally defective, okay, and so it's all uh, uh, color of law, it's a fraud, everything they do is a fraud, uh, fornication, and the reason I want to mention this is uh, this is Cowell's Law Dictionary, 1708 edition, and they're talking about a pretended act made in 1650, okay, which made fornication illegal. And so uh, the Declaration of Independence, he's combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution, unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. That's in the Declaration of Independence. That's what precipitated the War of Independence, okay? And they're doing the same thing again. It just comes back around again and again. The best solution is not go into their kangaroo so-called court, but if they drag you in there, here's a few ideas. There's no absolute guaranteed way to deal with these kangaroo courts because the courts uh, masquerading as judges. Some of them are more corrupt than other ones. Um, uh, technically, if the guy's honoring his oath, then you shouldn't have to say anything and the problem should go away. He should, the judge should be uh, basically talking to the prosecutor and, 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 and they make the thing go away. And, uh, and, and so then you leave and that's it. Um, so then, so then if you get stopped by their Leo code enforcers, you tell the code enforcers about Cork's masquerading as a judge. You tell the code enforcer how Cork cannot do anything judicial, and if they try, it's a nullity. They pass statutes that allow code enforcers to execute a so-called warrant in good faith. And once you tell them that the warrant's a nullity, it's not in good faith. And so you have to, uh, we'll cover that in the traffic stop uh, video coming up. Uh, as soon as possible, uh, what I do is I, if I know anything is going on, I start serving them with notice and demands. And the notice and demand is designed to take away their presumptions. And it should it should be served preferably by registered mail because registered mail is uh, is kept under lock and key, and it's uh, it's international. And you're if you're going from the land of Texas to the to the uh, their corporation, which is a territory, a DC territory, that's international. That falls under the international law rule. And so um, you serve it on the court, masquerading as a judge and the chief, uh, uh, the chief judge. OK, so if there's if this is a big court and there's lots of judges, then they got a chief judge or, or a presiding judge. And so you serve it on him. You serve it on the chief prosecutor. You serve it on the chief of police or other code enforcer boss on the public pretender and anybody else that might have something to do with the case. Templates can be obtained by contacting me privately or on the Yahoo private group. Um, a clerk masquerading as a judge is not competent to do anything judicial like issue orders or warrants. A clerk masquerading as a judge is operating in his private capacity and he has no immunity. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. It doesn't exist. It's a fraud. It's a void judgment. Uh, um, they're always dealing with a statute. All codes are derived from statutes. A code is a liar's opinion of what the statute says. That's exactly what a code is, okay? A bunch of liars get in a room and see what these statutes say and make up a code. All filing fees are based on statutes. All courts are governed by statutes. All officers of the court are governed by statutes. They want to know your name. That's giving evidence against yourself. Always answer a question with a question, if possible. Answer, I am me. Am I to understand that you want me to give evidence against myself by providing hearsay evidence? My name is hearsay. I don't have a problem answering your questions, but I need you to answer a few questions first. Um, am I to understand that this matter is involving a statute? And since this matter is involving a statute, then is it correct to say that you, uh, the judge, are a bought and paid for a clerk masquerading as a judge working for him, the prosecutor? And since this matter is involving a statute, then is it correct to say that you, the judge, and a prosecutor are operating in your private capacity and have no immunity? And since this matter is involving a statute, then you guys are nothing but a bunch of thieves. And, uh, and so... 
And and so then uh, and other things you could say, and it depends on how belligerent you want to be. Quite frankly, you know, I, I've I've told judges I have nothing but contempt for your so-called court. Okay, I told them that, and <laughs> they actually respected that. Okay, so. Again, if you lay a proper foundation, you have to lay a foundation, start serving them with documents first, okay, and make it so that they don't want to talk to you, and and and, and they won't be trying to drag you in there. <laughs> Anyways, other things you say, on and for the record, okay, so that, that, you know, you want to make sure it's on and for the record. That's a very important phrase to say for stuff that you want on the record. Uh, and again, all of this stuff, if it's on the record, then, then this is all stuff that you bring it up on appeal, and and it, it makes them look really bad. I'll tell you, uh, on or for the record, I want it known that I challenge jurisdiction and neither the bought and paid for a clerk on the bench, uh, nor the Satanist bar member prosecutor has proven jurisdiction. Okay, on or for the record, I challenge jurisdiction and this court has not proven jurisdiction. On or for the record, I do not consent to these proceedings. On or for the record, I have nothing but contempt for this proceeding, and so. Uh, you know, it depends on how belligerent you want to be, and, and um, you know, it's up to you. But, uh, you know, everybody has to uh, – uh, but if you tell them you have contempt, they can't charge you with contempt, okay, because you're being right up front with them, okay? And so they can't charge you with contempt. You tell them I have, con I have nothing but contempt. You know, if you you got to do it the right way. You have to serve them with notice and, 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 and all the rest of it, okay? And, and so um, – you know, it depends on on how it's proceeding and what's happening. Okay, and now, now, so if you serve them with notice, then maybe that judge will honor his oath, and when you get in there, he'll 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 tell you, you know, you don't have to say anything, and he'll just take over and, and handle it for you, and uh, and so then you don't have to say I have nothing but contempt, but uh, but if if they if you challenge jurisdiction and um, and then they're just kind of railroading you. Uh, you know, then, then uh, you know, you might want to bring that up. It's up to you. Uh, they need you to submit all hearsay evidence or it's not admissible. Okay, that's a very important point. A picture, which is an image, is hearsay. A name is hearsay. An address is hearsay. Uh, do you know what your address is? I mean, somebody told you what it was or it was written on the street. But, uh, but that's hearsay. Uh, date of birth is hearsay. Do you remember your date of birth? I don't remember the day I was given birth. Anything in a computer system is hearsay. How do you know somebody didn't hack into it? A social security number is hearsay. A copy of anything is hearsay. A government-issued identification is hearsay. A vehicle registration is hearsay. An insurance card is hearsay. It's all hearsay. If, you, if they push you to say something, tell them, I neither admit nor deny anything. The burden is on the liar to prove his case. That's why they need you to present the hearsay evidence. It's an image. It's a fraud. All hearsay evidence is a fraud. There's no witnesses. Where's the witnesses to this? If uh, if it's a liar uh, testifying, um, then statements of counsel in brief or an argument are not facts before the court and therefore insufficient for a motion to dismiss or for summary judgment, okay? And there's lots of cases that talk about that. Uh, a liar testifies. This uh, the uh, this is uh, what what they do all the time. Okay, they assault you with their public pretender. Uh, the way the liar can testify, and that way the liar can testify, and the pretender will not object. Uh, then the liar can testify for the witness, and the pretender will not object. Okay, and that's that's that you see that all the time. Okay. Uh, they can uh, prosecutorial misconduct, okay? There's a thing called prosecutorial misconduct. And some of the uh, things that, that are uh, fall under that is asserting facts, not in evidence, introducing uh, e admissible evidence, inadmissible evidence, co commenting on defendant's failure to testify, expressing personal opinions, inflammatory comments, withholding evidence favorable to the defense. If you or your liar does not object, you cannot bring that up on appeal, okay? Somebody has to object to that if they're doing it. And otherwise, you cannot bring it up on appeal. And that's why they want to assault you with their bought and paid for public pretender. We talked about that in my uh, 
uh, previous video and in, in part one of this, okay, what a bar member is. He's an officer of the court and and an officer of the court. So first of all, you you, you do everything you can to fire your your uh, uh, pretender because because uh, because that admits jurisdiction. Okay, that's exactly they want to assault you with that jurisdiction. And really, the key is is to challenge jurisdiction right from the beginning and keep challenging it. Um, and then so then there's the uh, ineffective assistance of counsel. And so then failure to object testifying by the prosecutor, failure to object to inadmissible evidence, failure to object to inflammatory statements, failure to object to prosecutor expressing opinions. And so those are all things that fall under ineffective assistance of counsel. And I, I'm not sure, I doubt that that's a fully extensive list, but that'll give you an idea, okay? If you're, if you're a liar, your pretender sits there and doesn't say anything, okay? What he's doing, okay, think about it. He's protecting his buddy, that's the prosecutor. Because because if you're able to object to that stuff and then you have to file an appeal and bring it all up on appeal, then he's probably not going to get reelected. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Matter of fact, he, something might happen and he might decide not to run for re-election because, because he's not going to get anywhere in his, in his work as government uh, Satanist buddies, okay? Because they're going to see that in the Court of Appeals and, uh, and that's not going to look too good for him, okay? And so, so your, your liar, your pretender is not going to do anything that's going to damage him because, because they're, it's a good old boy network. They're all part of the bar. Um, so known examples of prosecutorial Conduct. Uh, you ask the code enforcer under oath on the stand a question, and the prosecutor stands up and answers. He's testifying. Maybe, and so then your response should be, maybe we should get this prosecutor on the stand to testify, since he knows all about this matter. I want his butt up here, and 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 insist on it. And if the judge overrules it, then that's when you say, well, why should that be a surprise? You're bought and paid for a court masquerading as a judge. Why should that be a surprise? And, and start just railing on them, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you, chances are they're going to throw you out of there. <laughs> and that's what you want, quite frankly. You want them to throw your ass out of there. The prosecutor says his view of what happened, uh, that's testifying again, okay? If the prosecutor is saying this is what happened, he's testifying and, and object to it. Uh, same as above. The clerk allows it, response, why should I be surprised that you're bought and paid for by him? Jurisdiction's everything. I have a video on jurisdiction. Jurisdiction can be challenged at any time, and jurisdiction once challenged cannot be assumed and must be decided. Lack, defense of lack of jurisdiction over subject matter may be raised at any time, even on appeal. Um, however late this objection to jurisdiction has been made, or may be made in any case, in an inferior or appellate court of the United States, it must be considered and decided before any court can do, move one further step in the cause, as as any movement is necessarily the exercise of jurisdiction, and that's the Supreme Court. And so, the jurisdiction's everything. Once challenged, jurisdiction cannot be assumed; it must be proved to exist. There is no uh, discretion to no, ignore that lack of jurisdiction, and so that's what they do: is they just ignore that and they proceed. And uh, and so then it's a commercial transaction. Okay, that's that's you know really, where jurisdiction is consistent, the burden of establishing it rests upon the plaintiff, and the burden of proving jurisdiction rests upon the party asserting it. Court must prove on the record all jurisdictional facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. Okay, these people are Satanists. Okay, that you know, quite frankly, that's why they want uh, they want to get rid of common law because at common law they'd be put to death, and uh, they drag you into their kangaroo court and the clerk masquerading as a judge uh, uh, forges your signature onto their satanic contract to fabricate evidence of a debt. Then they issue a capius to their Satanist order followers to further assault you, kidnap you, and falsely imprison you. That's exactly what's going on, people. The sooner we figure this out, the sooner uh, we can put a stop to it. A capius is a writ of process formally of two sorts. Okay, so there's uh, two sorts. There's one before judgment and one ad after judgment. Um, if you want to read this whole thing, I'd say pause the video and read it. Uh, but there's two sorts, one before judgment and one after judgment. That's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. This is the one after judgment, case capius ad satisfaciendium. 
um, judicial writ of execution, which issues out of the record of a judgment where there's a recovery. Um, by this writ, the sheriff is commanded to take the body of the defendant in execution and keep him safely uh, so that uh, he have his body in court at the return of the writ to satisfy the plaintiff his debt and damages. Okay, So they fabricate a debt and they sell you into prison. That's exactly what they do, people. And uh, and this is Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. Um, a KPS is not a warrant of arrest. Okay, and that's really important um, because um, it's 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 not a warrant of arrest, and that's what you tell the code enforcers when they uh, assault you because an unlawful arrest is an assault. Um, the end justifies the means is satanic. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, put darkness for light and light for darkness. And that's what these Satanists are doing. If a man be, uh, this is Deuteronomy 24 and 7, if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, maketh merchandise of him or selleth him, then that thief shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you, okay? And we the people need to start uh, uh, stepping up to our uh, duties and responsibilities, and uh, we need to put this evil away from among us. Um, 2 Peter 2 and 3, And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now the long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Um, Patrick Henry coined the phrase, Give me liberty or give me death, after he witnessed a man flogged to death for refusing to take a license. Uh, everything in their so-called court does is a fraud. They spell your name in all block capital letters. It's not your name. It's a SESTIC trust. They want you to be the surety for it. It's what they want to do. Uh, and that's a fraud. They spell your address in all block capital letters. A fraud. They use a zip code. Another fraud. They present themselves as neutral and unbiased when in reality they're bought and paid for. All so-called judges, state or federal, are actually federal whores selling their justice. There's no such thing as an Article Three judge because they're all territorial. Okay? I don't care. They're U.S. citizens. So they're all territorial by definition. The Texas government code is for D.C. and the territories. Okay? That's exactly what it's for. All statutes are for territories. Okay? And so anytime they're operating under statute, it's a territory. And they have no jurisdiction. They're nothing but a bunch of Satanists. They're thieves. These Satanists cannot speak the truth. That's one of the hallmarks of Satanism. Lies, half-truths, fraud, and deception. They criminally convert your appellation. They criminally convert your postal address. They present the judge as neutral and unbiased when the so-called judge is actually a bought and paid for clerk. See the Leos, and uh, actually it's, uh, I have it titled uh, Leos because uh, 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 Google was uh, blocking my emails, but it's actually pigs in Azle, Texas. Videos one, two, three, and four is coming up. Everything they do is a fraud. Um, color signifies a probable plea, which, which is in fact false. Okay, it's a lie. The Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. Ye are the father of the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And that's John 8 and 44. These people are Satanists. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay, so... These people are going to hell, okay? And so, um, uh, but uh, uh, we cannot be fearful, okay? We have to be brave. And uh, and the more up in their face you are, uh, you know, it's my experience, the more in their face that you are, the more they run and hide. And um, and so, but you have to lay the foundation. You have to have to uh, you have to do it before you set foot in there. If you do set foot in there, and serve them with some documents and just just lay it on the line. Okay, I get really belligerent, uh, but I can and I get away with it. I'm not recommending that everybody get as belligerent as I do. So some of my forms. You know, I would say that uh, you need to edit them and and take out stuff that you're not comfortable with and, and make it your form. But it'll give you a place to start. And um, anyways, 
um, they send out their U.S. citizen pigs to assault you and kidnap you and falsely imprison you as a revenue officer under the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. Then they hold a show trial in their kangaroo court that has a U.S. citizen prosecutor, a U.S. citizen clerk masquerading as a judge, which is an Article One military tribunal. Then they make a merchandise of you and sell you into slavery with their void judgment, okay? Um, this is the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. Um, in the definition section, this is found at 80 stat, 1130 and 1131. Um, and in the definition section, it says a motor vehicle is anything that's registered. Okay, so that's, they presume under their martial law jurisdiction that because it's registered, then it's a motor vehicle. And so, and then it's all talking about uh, 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 commercial uh, terminologies here, security, bonds, notes, certificates, indebtedness, all sorts of stuff. Okay, and so this is, this is exactly what's going on here, people. And actually under Title 18, United States Code, Section 31, a motor vehicle is, 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 uh, um, uh, you have to be carrying passengers or property for hire, and that's the proper definition. Um, so, so if you're not a U.S. citizen, then then it means nothing, okay? And so that's the key, really, is 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 not to uh, not give evidence against yourself. Okay. Where there is no jurisdiction, there is no judge. The proceeding is as nothing. Jurisdiction is everything, people, and that's where you need to go with it, in my opinion. Such has been the law from the days of Marshall Saya. That's a quote from Koch, uh, which is like the 1500s, and it's uh, also a quote from the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, and then the, the ultimate it was a federal district court that uh, cited all of that. Avoid judgment is one which from its inception was a complete nullity and without legal effect. Avoid judgment is one which has no legal force or effect whatever. It's an absolute nullity. Its invalidity may be asserted by any person whose rights are affected at any time and at any place. It need not be attacked directly, but may be attacked collaterally whenever and wherever it's interposed. And um, there's a whole video I have on void judgments, okay? And so uh, I would suggest that you watch it. It's It's got a lot more uh, material in it than this. Um, courts have decreed that one of jurisdiction makes all acts of judges, magistrates, U.S. marshals, sheriffs, local police, all void. Not just voidable, void. Okay? Watch the void judgments video. So, it is never over, you have to understand. It is never over until you say it's over. So, if they go ahead and railroad you, then then as soon as you can, file a revocation of signatures, because that's exactly what they did, is they forged your signature, that, that, that clerk masquerading as a judge, forged your signature onto a contract, and then you file a notice of void judgment. And templates uh, are in the files directory in the Yahoo group called Administrating Your Public Servants. And uh, again, you have to read through that thing and make sure you're comfortable with what it says and, and take out stuff or add stuff, you know, whatever. Make it your document. Um, I'm, I get belligerent and and I just dump on them, uh, but I can because because they know who I am. I guarantee you, they know exactly who I am. And 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 you know, at some point, you're going to make it that way too, where they don't want to talk to you, and you can do it too. But you know, it depends on where you're at and and where your head is, because you know you have to be able to defend it. Okay, and so do you know who you are? You know, watch my videos. Do you know who you are? <laughs> That's a playlist. And so, uh, do you know who you are? And so, by which he also, uh, he went and preached to the spirits in prison. And that's First Peter 3 and 19. Okay, so spirit prison is hell. Okay, that's what you have to understand. And, and it shall come to pass in that day that... Um, uh, that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and they shall be shut up in prison after many days shall they be visited. And so, and that's Isaiah. And so these people are all going to hell, okay? Uh, and uh, and I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to be there. And that's one of the things I tell them is, is, is I shake the dust of the earth from off my feet against you, Satanist, and we're going to be talking about this on Judgment Day. And... Um, uh, it behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself to resist invasions of it in the case of others, or their case may, by change of circumstances, become his own. Okay? And that's Thomas Jefferson. He was a brilliant guy. He's my favorite founding father without reservation. Uh, if ye love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servant 
attitude better than the animating contest of freedom. Go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which beat you. May your chains set lightly upon you, and may our posterity forget that you are ever our countrymen. And as Samuel Adams quoted from the debates of 1776. When shall it be said that in any country of the world, my poor are happy, neither ignorance or distress is to be found among them, my jails are empty of prisoners, my streets of beggars, the aged are not in want, the tax is not oppressive, the rational world is my friend, because I am friend of its happiness. When these things can be said, then that country may boast of its constitution and government. That's by Thomas Paine. And we have nothing to boast about. We have a gang of criminals that have seized control, uh, uh, and, and they're nothing but thieves and murderers is what they are. And we, the people, need to stand up and, 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 and um, we need to put this evil away from among us. Okay, that's really what we need to do. This is evil. This is, this is Satanism. And, uh, and by us allowing this to happen, uh, we're going to be held accountable. And um, so, uh, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Okay, and so I am doing my best to make sure that I am not going to be held accountable for the blood and sins of this generation. And I believe that I was born into this life to be a witness. And so um, I don't want to be held accountable. And as now that you're watching it, you know about it too. And so you are now a watchman, and either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And so you need to do your part to, to uh, make people aware of this and and uh, and or you're going to be held accountable and um, and I hope it's my hope that that nobody's held accountable uh, that that we're all standing there and we're blameless and uh, but I guess we'll all see won't we uh, anyways um, you know uh, you need to be aware of that I, I hope that uh, that we all do our part to put a stop to this uh, no man is a mountain other videos, Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 and 2, actually there's a Bar Members 3 too. Um, uh, Unidroit, uh, Martial Laws here, Quasi-Contracts and Roman Civil Law, De facto Courts, All Courts are Ecclesiastical Courts, D.C. Courts in Texas, and Jurisdiction. And uh, I, that Boy Judgment video is not even mentioned there. Um, upcoming videos, Do-It-Yourself Free Mail. Okay, uh, do it yourself traffic stop, do it yourself petition for writ of habeas corpus. Okay, the handwritten ones are the best. Uh, do it yourself toll roads, you just need to know what to put in the habeas corpus. Do it yourself toll roads. Um, at common law, we have the free use of the roads, and we need to put a stop. Well, you know, certainly they can charge tolls to carrying passengers or property for hire. To, that, those are commercial, and so, uh, but that's the ones they should be dealing with, and uh, so. Um, Anyways, you need to be aware of this. Why be donating money to these uh, criminal corporations? Because if you do, and that's the same thing with the mail. Uh, when you donate money to these criminal, you're encouraging these thieves, and and you're you're paying the banksters off. You know, it's it's you're just donating money to the criminal enterprise is what you're doing, and. Uh, Copies of these documents can be found at my private group at Yahoo called Administrating Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. That last statement's there for the for the uh, revenue uh, code enforcers, uh, because because I am not interested in any of your benefits or privileges, and you can put your privileges and benefits up your rectal orifice, and uh, uh, so so because I prefer gold or silver coin, uh, and I only take the IOUs as a less desirable alternative. Because that's what the, the Satanists have circulating around, and, and everybody has. So, uh, uh, anyways. Um, and so um, if you find this useful, then you need to pay it forward. If you don't know what pay it forward means, then watch the movie. There's a movie. It's rentable, and it's a pretty good movie, in my opinion. My blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website, sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo. 
my YouTube profile, Sovereign Living. I have a Facebook community page called Sovereignty International. I have a Facebook private group called Sovereignty International. I have a Yahoo private group called Administrating Your Public Servants and a Google private group called Administrating Your Public Servants. And so uh, you can contact me if you need uh, more information. Uh, my attitude is, is that we all got ourselves into this problem because of our own ignorance. Okay. And so uh, part of the learning process uh, of getting ourselves out of it is learning how we got ourselves into the problem. Uh, and so so I'm really not too much into to, uh, babysitting people. I provide all sorts of information for free. I provide everything you need for free. And so if you want my personal assistance, well, you know, I don't work for free. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. So I don't work for free. And so um, if you want my personal assistance, um, you have all of these uh, uh, resources that are available. And, um, and so we'll leave it at that. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. And, and, um, and I hope you have a real nice day.